Hello, Herr Döpfer. Hello, uh, good to see you here at Superbooth 2. We met uh, a few weeks ago at NAMM. It only seems like a few weeks, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we have our news uh, built into this case. Most of them uh, you already know from NAMM. All these stuff you see over there, uh, we already and told up with to... The, with the, the lovely new face plates. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, so I tell you just uh, the news we show here uh, at the super booth. These are two new VCOs. Um, after all, the A111 II is uh, the new version of our high-end uh, voltage-controlled oscillator A111 one, which is no longer available since uh, a few years. So uh, we did a, a redesign of the high-end VCO and it's called 111-2. Um, at the first glance it's the same uh, as uh, the former version but we have uh, we changed a, a little bit the linear FM section. What you see here is uh, an LED because we have a linear uh, frequency modulation control way which you can use uh, to go down to zero hertz so the it, it will stop after all so you can use it as an LFO as well as, as an LFO yeah so we have a manual control over uh, the linear FM if you use it as a standard LFO you have to turn it fully clockwise and then you have the function of a normal VCO with the exponential controls over tune, fine and the one volt pro octave input, the range rotary switch and the, the exponential FM. We also have a, a linear FM input in addition to the manual control uh, of the uh, linear frequency and the usual manual controls for the pulse width and the pulse width modulation uh, of the rectangle and we have the typical uh, inputs and outputs we have a hard sync input a soft sync input uh, sawtooth rectangle triangle sawtooth though it's uh, nothing special um, the main feature of this module is that you have a, a frequency range of uh, 15 octaves with uh, 12 octaves uh, good one volt per octave uh, tracking. So that's uh, the main difference to, to our other VCOs and that you have a manual control over the linear FM which allows to use it to go down to zero hertz and to use it as a uh, LFO as well. I gotcha. And uh, what we see next to uh, the 11 Dash two is the 11 dash three. It's essential the same VCO core, but with reduced controls and in and outputs. So after all, these are the same VCOs, but this one does not have all the controls and, in, and inputs and output of, of this one. Whenever you don't have uh, much space, but you need a, a, a precision VCO, this is uh, the right decision. You have only the controls over the, the, the tune, the FM input and the pulse width and anything else is here available only as a socket. So if you want, for example, uh, a pulse width modulation with adjustable level, you need an external attenuator or something like that. But after all, it's the same, it's tiny, it's, yeah, it's exactly the same plus, core. Yeah, exactly. and, um, I also have to point out that the waveforms are nearly perfect, so we have no glitches, no artifacts uh, as usual, and even the, the sine wave is uh, nearly perfect. It's a much better uh, waveform converter than in our uh, other VCOs. It's based on a suggestion by Titch 
Yeah, no, I called Tim Tim Stitch come here. It's on our, our website. He recommended the circuit, and uh, it's it's really a great circuit. And we also uh, offer only this uh, sine converter circuit as a separate module. It's the A one hundred and eighty four dash two. On top, you see um, input for a triangle and a sine output. So this is nothing but the sine wave converter of the. Uh, high-end VCO, which can be used if you have an LFO or a VCO, which has no sign, you can use it to uh, obtain the sign from the triangle, or if you have uh, a VCO like the A110, which doesn't have a perfect sine wave, uh, to obtain a, a perfect sign from the triangle. And in addition, because this is not a module just with two sockets, we added a voltage control crossfader, which is used to uh, crossfade, for example, between two different waveforms. It is normal so that you can uh, pan between triangle and sine, but if you uh, insert uh, two different uh, inputs like a rectangle or sawtooth, you can also use it as a voltage control crossfader. Oh, okay. You can use it also to crossfade between uh, LFO signals and ADSR, so it's it's DC coupled, so you can use it for any kind of, of crossfading. Yes. And uh, also new is uh, this performance mixer. I, I did it in the first place for, for me because I hated always to have an additional external mix uh, from Mackie or Beringer or whatever. So I said, I want to have everything in there. So after all, it's, it's nothing but what you expect from a, from a standard mixer. You have uh, an, an audio input with a mute switch. You have the gain control so with that you can adjust different gate levels. You have the, the, the master uh, level. You have uh, uh, an aux uh, circuit and you have the panning and this is the output. You can uh, combine uh, the output section with one or two or three or more of the input sections so you can have four or eight or twelve inputs ah, so and, and so on. Right. So, you can so it's well, got, it's got internal busing then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we also have new, uh, I should not forget, all the modules in black. Not not really all modules, but all the standard modules you would expect from a, from a standard system are available with black panels and these uh, these vintage knobs. And we also have the low cost cases available uh, with uh, in the black coated version. Yeah, and I should not forget the trigger sequencer is now available. It's it's now in, it should be now in the shops. Okay, so so you have been pretty busy then? Yeah, I was busy and for the next three years I will go to holidays. So we'll, I'm not sure if you will see us in the next three years. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.